Hello, this is Dave, W8XAL. I'm the Vice President of the Colorado Traffic League here in Colorado, and we'll be doing a short video today on how to fill out a radiogram. This is part one in our series of National Traffic System. It's not that scary. Fun fact, that's what NTS could stand for. Not that scary. The National Traffic System is a nationwide network of amateur radio operators operating to send messages by radio. We are the relay in the Amateur Radio Relay League, ARRL. It was started in 1915 to help pass messages instead of using the telegraph system, which cost money. Continued uh, strong all throughout history. Um, with the advent of cell phones, it's become a little bit less strong, but still definitely a valuable tool in your, in your toolbox and definitely a wonderful skill to have to be able to copy a message exactly as you received it and then relay it along to the next station. Really, any, any ham operator can do this. You don't have to have an amateur extra license with a kilowatt of power and a gigantic antenna to be NTS. All you really got to have is a technician license and a VHF UHF radio. So, when we pass messages over amateur radio, we do it across different states, across long distances. Everybody has to be using the same form, otherwise it could get challenging, especially on the short shortwave frequencies where audio comes and goes. The signals get really strong and really weak and you have to know what to expect. This is the radiogram form. We've agreed on this as amateur radio operators. This has been in this way for a very long time. It has sections for a message number, precedence, HX, and see all the different things on there. So, we're going to go through today how to fill out this form, how to properly send a radiogram. Just a very entry level thing you could do to get involved with the National Traffic System. Remember, it's not that scary. So, today's message is going to a uh, YouTube follower of ours, uh, Charles Kozlowski. N2VZX. So, the message number is anything that you want it to be, but it has to be numbers. In this case, we're going to do 1809. It just has to be a number that is unique to you. If somebody has a delivery failure, they are going to reference that message number. So, if you make them all message number one, you're not going to know what message failed to get to its recipient. Precedence is a statement of the priority of this message. There are a few different precedences that we can use uh, on amateur radio. There are four of them to be exact. They are routine, welfare, priority, or emergency. Now emergency is spelled out. All the other ones are abbreviated, a P, a W, or an R. 99.9% .9 of the traffic we see is routine. Just like this message is a routine message. Handling instructions is our next thing. HX is an abbreviation for handling instructions. Up on your screen now is a table of all the different handling instructions. They are represented by different letters. In this case, we are going to go with Hotel X-Ray Charlie. We want delivery confirmation. So, <clears throat> what that means is the station who delivers this message to the recipient should originate a message back to us that says the date and time of delivery. Some of these you may notice also talk about long distance phone calls, toll calls, or postal fees. You know, that's kind of a, a shout back to the days of the postal service, and, and really the, not, not the postal service, but the days of long distance phone calls. When that was a concern, people were doing this to try to get around paying long distance fees. The station of origin is the station that originated this traffic. In this case, I took a message from W0DDZ. Now, I am W8XAL, but W0DDZ actually originated the traffic, so we write that down. Our check, we can't fill in just yet. The check is the number of words. You see on down here, there's 25 blank dashes. Each one of those dashes represents a word. So, <coughs> excuse me, your radiogram can have up to 25 words. We don't know the number of words in our message yet, so we can't fill that in. 
The place of origin is here in Greeley, Colorado. Time filed is important for time-sensitive messages, mostly in an emergency situation, but uh, in, in 90, again, 99.9% .9 of the time, you don't use time filed. So the date, people use different date schemes. Uh, what I've always done is I've always used the date UTC. So it is technically after midnight UTC. So today's date is April 16th. And it's going to Charles. Excuse my handwriting there. It's a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little rough. Now, for privacy reasons, we're not going to write down Charles's phone or uh, address here. And when you are uh, sending out this traffic, you want to make every effort you can to get a phone number, an email address, something. In fact, I can almost guarantee you that when this message is transmitted, they're going to ask if we have a phone number or an email address. It just increases the probability that the message will actually be delivered. So uh, it's okay to send one without, but we're kind of taking a chance here. If this were to be disaster type traffic, we would want to make sure we have a local landline phone number. In a disaster, local phone lines may still be available while the long distance long haul lines may be disabled. We had a similar thing happen here in Estes Park, which is a mountain town about 45 miles west of Greeley, where all of their cables that went down the canyons that contained all the phone lines and everything were destroyed by a flood. Two canyons, four sets of lines, all destroyed. Because of that, the local phone system still worked, but anytime you tried to call out of the Estes Valley, you got a busy signal. So it's very important to always have a local phone number whenever possible. Cellular phones may or may not work in a disaster, but it's more likely that a landline will work. All right, why don't we figure out what we're going to say to Charles here. We've got, his, we've got his information now. Before we actually send this, we're going to make sure that we put down his address, but we're, not going to, we're going to be nice to him and not put his address on YouTube. Those of you who are amateur radio operators know how to look it up, but we'll, uh, we'll save the extra exposure there. So why don't we say thank you for helping with our YouTube video x-ray. So X-ray represents a period. We write out X-ray, but we know that that means period. So the message is, thank you for helping with our YouTube video, period. You never end a message on an X-ray, so we're going to end it with 7-3. Signature goes down here at the bottom. You write it between the received and the bottom line here. So we're going to sign this N-C-A-R-C-U-Tube channel W zero D D Z operator it's just that simple it's not that scary this presentation was brought to you by the Northern Colorado Amateur Radio Club for more information visit our website ncarc.net thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe